Now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hook up. Get ready for more of the best fishing information and the hottest tips on improving your angling skills. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano. And by Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. And now, Southern California's sports fishing voice, the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray, Rock Cod, Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Welcome back. Hour number two. Let's talk hookup on the Mighty 1090. Pete Gray here. Rock Cod, Rick Max is here, too. And we have Mr. Dave Pfeiffer, who's the president of Shimano American, in the studio with us. Honored to have Dave for our annual visit. Uh, let's see. We've been doing this for like 25 years, Dave, right? <laughs> Don't tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, uh, yeah. 20, almost. We're going on our 28th year here. Yeah, I know. It's a long and time. Uh, Shimano's been our sponsor, I believe, for... 26 of those uh, 28 years. which That would be our longest active sponsorship ever. Wow. No kidding. That's yeah. pretty cool. Well, man. We're honored and we're very proud of it. Thrilled to have you guys. So yeah. uh, we appreciate all your support and all the great things that Shimano has done. And think about where we've come, all of us, in 26 uh, years. I know. Right? I know. Pretty amazing. Pretty it cool. is. Yeah. It is. And all the so. transitions. What were we fishing 26 years ago? We were fishing uh, little albacore. And whatever, yellowtail, calico bass, right? Right. And now we're fishing giant bluefin. TLD-5s and TLD-10s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, TL- TSMs. Yeah. Yeah, TSM-2s. Ah, yeah. oh, I remember those days. Mono, <laughs> right? All the arguments on pink mono and yeah, all exactly. that stuff, pink right? Pink Andy. Pink <laughs> Andy and all those arguments about mono and, uh, yeah. And then was, the, uh, the first big game changer was Trinidad 30, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what year was that? Uh, that would have been 94 also, best of my 94. recollection. Right wow. in there at 92 to 94, yeah. Doug, yeah. Uh, Doug Kern tells a story all the time about Trinidad, and we, uh, we always like hearing it. And it was, you know, he'd, he had gone back to um, like a, a dealer kind of meeting <laughs> fun thing, and it was in Florida, and it was during the introduction of Trinidad. And, you know, keep in mind, that was in the days of the, you know, the, the real before that was a TLD-15 yeah. or a, maybe a 2040 Star Drag. And, and uh, he said, you remember like when they unveiled it, like this is the new thing, and it was gold and the smoothest thing ever and this big handle and thought, wow, this is the coolest reel ever. And then he always talks about when he turned it on its side and he saw the gear ratio stamped on there and it said 6.2 to 1 gear ratio. And he goes, I looked at him and I said, you ruined it. You yep. just ruined it. There's no way you can't. You can never have a reel that will fish saltwater that's that fast. You'll lose all your power. You can't have torque. And he even said, Dave told him, like, just. Just, just try it. Just wait. <laughs> yeah. And the next day, he pulled on a tarp and just said, like, that's it. The yeah. game has been changed oh, yeah. forever. You, know, was, you, yeah. you can't have a reel that's that fast and still have power until then. And then that, that was it. That Probably was it. one of the biggest game-changing reels in the history of Shimano, I'm going to guess. Uh, it start, yeah, it, it, was, it was certainly big. I mean, it started a pretty big revolution, I think, in, in saltwater reels themselves. Yes. I mean, that led to all kinds of different technology yeah. and lever drags and all that, right? We couldn't have Period. done... Well, a reel that in Shimano's history that a lot of people overlook and forget about is the Torsa, Torsa. because Trinidad was first. That allowed us to go to Torsa, but Torsa wasn't around long because, again, with some new technologies, we figured out how to make Talica, which was really – Talica was really the evolution of the Torsa. Really? I mean, yeah, yeah I, I could argue, and we had arguments at the time that yeah. we could have called it the Torsa, the next Torsa, so yeah. Torsa B, oh. because that was the gearbox – and everything that we needed in a lever drag because it was not hard to make – I don't say not hard. It was less hard to make a high-speed star drag with power than it is a high-speed lever drag oh, really? with power. Wow. And that goes back to the original TLDs. The very first TLDs that we put on the market in TLD 20 and 25 had a higher gear ratio than they did today. But they all blew up, and oh. we quickly changed it because the graphite frame couldn't support the pressures of the higher gear ratio. So we quickly changed that to a lower gear ratio. So then, like I said, we went to Trinidad, then came Torsa, and then came Talica. But Torsa was an amazing, yeah, amazing powerful reel. reel. It, it just kind of came at a gap in time of techniques around the world and a lot of things where people weren't quite there yet in, uh, yeah. in a lever drag. It was before but its time. It was kind of before widespread braided line use yeah. um, in saltwater. 
right? People are still learning braided line use and then uh, everything. But then that, that evolved really honestly into, uh, into Talica, which, so like I said, that whole evolution was, wow. uh, yeah, it was well, pretty cool. Talica is, thank God for Torso. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talica is such a culmination. I mean, that is the best reel, at least for our market. I know everybody's different. I'm sure in Florida they would argue in Stella, and probably Stella's got more technology, whatever else. But Talica, in my mind, is the best reel that's ever been made, ever. It's castable. It's it's that power. It's that strong. Like, you can you can just land fish with such smaller gear that you would you had no business ever participating in win and they just they don't fail they don't break they don't corrode they don't I, I, i've never put drags in italica i mean i've had them for how many years now like they just they that reel just doesn't wear out of any kind they're they're incredible yeah, somebody asked me about that the other day and i about the development of tackle and everything and i said you know i think the coolest thing is if you go back 10 15 years ago there isn't one reel that you could take if you were going to go on a fishing trip around the world, right. all the greatest saltwater spots, and you could only pack one reel, I said, you you could do it, but it wasn't going to be yeah. great. You could take a Talic at 25 anywhere in the world. Yeah. You'd catch big tunas. Everything. You'd catch blue marlin. I mean, you could catch, Yo, you could you troll it. Tail, you, could, whatever. you could do anything with it. And it doesn't matter really to any, what size the fish, because also because of line, you, you could do anything with it. And that that's a really cool kind of situation Pretty I mean, amazing. what's available today to go anywhere in the world and catch stuff to catch 250 pound bluefin tunas i mean you know what thank god these tuna didn't show up like you were talking like 90 seriously right right yeah. we would have been looking at them we never would have caught one yeah. graphite Ever. frames yeah. all the old school things that we had like yeah Mono. You'd be in trouble yeah <laughs> we yeah, never yeah. would have no. I, I would say probably if one a season got caught it would have been a big yeah. deal right one or two think but, about the long range guys you yeah. to throw everybody in a skiff i know yeah, you know to catch a big grit. bluefin or blue totally. big elephant tuna yeah. yeah i still have that table card from 19 <laughs> or 1994 95 when i caught that big um uh, yellowfin tuna on the Shogun yeah. 185. I was fishing for Oahu and I hooked on a Oahu jig a uh, on the on the Trinidad yeah, 30. 30. I remember that. And fish, it was yeah. like the first like big fish caught on a Trinidad 30, yeah. right? Yeah, I remember that. It was everybody gets lucky, right? Yeah. That was a it was a lucky. Day. I still have that table card in my office. It was pretty cool. And now, like I said, if, if these if these fish here go to 300, 400, 500, who knows? I mean. You've got a Talica 50, yeah. and it's yeah. the same deal, man. So, I mean, that's game over on a 500-pound bluefin tuna right there. Yeah. That's uh, that's kind of cool. And it could happen. It could happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. 400-pound bluefin tuna this year, maybe. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I've, I've talked to some people, and there's kind of two schools of thought that they could absolutely 100% show up, just boom. And then there's some thought out there that once they get past the current size that we have, they, they're their food base needs to change to sustain them. Mm -hmm. Once they start getting consistently in that 300 and up is that they need sort of bigger food available than anchovy. In other words, they can't subsist. Big balls of anchovy. Um, I don't know which is right. I'm just saying that's what I've heard. And I I certainly have no basis of knowledge myself, although it makes a little bit of sense. I mean, all those big fish up in the Northeast and stuff, they have both size baits to feed on. They have sand eels and they have herring and that, but they're eating, Big stuff. Yeah. You see the kind of baits they use on Wicked Tuna. I mean, they're eating a lot, and they chase bluefish around, and, I mean, they're eating. So, if in theory, I guess, if we had a lot of mackerel, you know, that might help. But, anyway, that's yeah. just supposition. I'd so. have no problem fishing 15-pound kelp paddy yellow no, tail. Wouldn't it be cool? Seeing seeing 400-pounders come through eating 15 slow pounds. Troll that, cool. Bridle that yeah, thing and slow troll it. Yeah, absolutely. That would be fun. <laughs> hey, let's find out what's biting. You got it, man. It's time for the catch port. Time for your fishdope.com report, and that's sponsored in part by the Sato Crimp and Winder Company, where they only make products for serious sport fishermen. The Sato Crimp system is the best way to make your own spectra to fluorocarbon or mono top shots easy it's cost effective and it's time it's time and big fish proven some commercially made top shots can cost as much as 40 to 55 dollars or more and the sato crimp kit and supplies at selected tackle stores like fisherman's landing tackle the long fin takas tackle and save on tackle will hook you up there is not a better or more proven system than that sato crimp system for sure hey let's start off with our catch port with our private boater buddy captain mark wish of pacific edge on the line good morning mark Hey, good morning, Ricky, Pete, Dave. Hey, Dave, congratulations on that catch on that linen fish. <laughs> that was you. absolutely fantastic. I appreciate it. Thank you fantastic. very much. Well. And, uh, hey, guys, so we got the last week of January already, hard to believe, and we got nice weather and some biting fish. So at this time of year, there is a lot of focus on Catalina Island. And sad to say, I don't have a whole lot of uh, hard info on yellows and sea bass. Getting plenty of questions, but not too much to follow it up with right now. 
Some good rumors floating around, though, and I'm going to be over there tomorrow checking it out, so we'll see what happens. The bait situation at the island is pretty decent, though. It's mostly up there in the closure zone, uh, just below Ben Weston. You can make bait in that area. You cannot legally fish in that area, unfortunately, because that was some of the absolute best structure for yellows and sea bass, especially early in the season here that they uh, lopped off from us, but it is what it is. Closely speaking, guys, Local bass fishing has been just wide open here this week. Uh, fishing more of the easterly structure spots like Isers at 105 zone, the east end of the horseshoe like that. Uh, very, very good bass fishing on sand bass and calco bass, both squid leadhead combo always works there, mostly low and slow on the bottom for the sandies. But yesterday I had friends out, they just absolutely clobbered the bass there. Calco's up on top, sandies underneath them. And uh, straight plastic, no bait at all. It is really biting. Water was clean green and 60 degrees, which is not bad after all that rain uh, for late January. It's just um, got some good conditions around. You also want to keep an eye on that 150 there. There's been scattered yellows there on and off for quite some time now. They're, it's mostly very early in the morning. Stuff's up a little bit, and then it sinks out. Some surface iron fish and the occasional yo-yo jig fish. So you want to keep an eye on that. There's also been some signs of thrashers out there in that same zone. Thrashers have been up chasing the bait schools around in there. And uh, for some local exotics, I don't know what's going on up there in Santa Monica Bay, but them trigger fish are schooling up and biting. That's just kind of a tropical species in a whole new zone, but whichever, we'll take it. And then offshore, still a dab of that blue fin around, amazingly, from, you know, I was fascinating listening to what Frank was saying about that singer making a set and getting a handful of, them bluefin down there uh, off of Ensenada, and there's been some fish seen up on the ridge there, 181, 182 zone, toward that 178 zone, and then all the way up to the 209, 312 sector. Uh, most of that stuff, it's just up and down real quickly. Most of it's been smaller fish, although there was one spot of straight cows up there uh, inside that 312 here this week. So uh, it's all around still. It's just going to be amazing when conditions Either they decide to float up or conditions change a little bit or whatever makes those things show. Uh, but to see the amount that we're seeing at this time of year, I think, is uh, bodes well for our season. Yeah, But no that's kidding. this week's report. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, a lot going on, guys. Oh, yeah, a lot going on. Of course, fishdope.com, uh, Danny, Jeff, and the boys at fishdope.com have all the info for you. 20 bucks off a new membership to fishdope.com using the code Hook up now, lower case and no space. Hook up now is your $20 code to fishdope.com. And, Mark, how do we find you? B, we're in Huntington Beach. The store's on the corner of Bolsa Chica and Edinger by the big Chevron station there. Their phone number is area code 714-840-4262. The website's pacificedgetackle.com. And we got a whole bunch more work done on it, more pictures up showing some of the cool stuff we're doing. So stop by and check it out. We appreciate it. Ultimate and uh, we'll talk to you next week. And, no oh, Telling what we're going to be talking about. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. kidding, Mark. Appreciate that. All this good weather we're having and uh, flat, calm conditions. Uh, time to go fishing. Time to go fishing. I'm going to go check out some uh, wintertime spots or Catalina tomorrow. We're going to go see what's going on. All right. Good, good luck. Thanks a lot for the see time. You guys. Right, now let's head on down to San Diego over to Mission Bay and C4 Sport Fishing. Talk to our buddy Marcos. Marcos, nice to, nice to dry out a little bit at C4 this week. Right. We got some beautiful weather today, especially this morning. It's just absolutely beautiful out here on the water. Unfortunately, not much fishing this week. A little tough there, like you said. You know, that weather really makes it tough to get out trips consistently, and, you know, we know how that goes. But the few trips they did get out actually went pretty well. Some decent uh, bass fishing, a little bit of sculpin, some halibut. The one count I do have, the tribute last week on their two-and-a-half day, they went down the coast there. had limits of reds for both days, a couple yellowtail, a lot of rockfish, so very good fishing there. And we got the tribute and the tomahawk out on day and a half trips today, so hopefully they come back with good news. And we'll see how the fishing is going down the coast there. We do have those trips scheduled on the weekend, the day and a half on the tribute through February at the least here. So definitely check the website, seaforthlanding.com. Our half days up there, still trying to get out there and catch some of that bass, another winter fish there. Those tribute trips on the weekend. No news on the San Diego yet. I know a lot of people are waiting on that, and we'll get them up and running as soon as we can. But seaforthlanding.com. Give us a call at the office, 619-224-3383. Come down, visit us in person. It's pretty slow right now. We could use some visitors. Buy some gear in there. Get ready for the upcoming season because I think it's just going to be as good as always. Right on, Marcos. Well, certainly some great opportunity with this weather coming forward. I'm, I'm with you. I think that this is going to be a solid week of fishing. Good week fishing. Yeah, no doubt about it. Great job. Appreciate the report as always, and we'll look forward to talking to you next week. 
I'll talk to you then, guys. Thanks, Marcos. All right, well, that's going to wrap up our catch for today. Again, sponsored in part by the Fish Pros at Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. Not only do they offer the best processing for your fish when your trip returns to the San Diego Landings, now with Fish Pros, the market, you can purchase fresh fish, smoked and jerkied fish, spices, rubs, and their killer smoked cheese. And don't forget their famous tuna burger. Pick up some at their Liberty Station location or order online at Fisherman'sProcessing.com. Or better yet, join us tomorrow at the live broadcast at Dana Landing Market, where we're going to be having the huge Bay Bass Seminar and Sale Day. Fisherman's Processing will be there. That's the spot where I got hooked on the uh, the spices last year. Sean, oh, yeah. Sean I, I bought a bag last year, and that's where I got hooked on it. So you can go see the, all the guys have... from Fish Pros tomorrow at the Seminar and Sale. At, uh, with some at samples, too. I'm, I'm sure you could probably get all one right. out of them. Starts with a live broadcast of Let's Talk Hookup tomorrow, 7 a.m. at Dana Lanning. Don't miss it. It'll be a fun day. The phones are absolutely packed. Let's jump back into them and talk to uh, Hollis, who's calling us from San Tea this morning. Hi, Hollis. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, guys. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Hollis. Uh, the question is, is there going to be any any new changes in any of the rod technology? And if you can give me some insight into the Stella, I've been kind of curious about uh-huh. that, guys. Thank you. Yep, sure. Uh, actually, it's funny you mention it. We have, uh, we have a, a tremendous amount of new rod technology that will be coming out later this year. Uh, really, some proprietary technology and some of the best rods by far that um, that will have ever made, probably for especially for the saltwater market, but for the freshwater market cool. also. So, um, yeah, so look forward to that. I can't give you any more information on that uh, right now, but I'm very <laughs> excited about it. And on Stella, um, that's a broad question. I mean, to give you more information, it's just uh, so much depends on what what you're trying to do, whether you're fish in saltwater or freshwater, whether you're throwing poppers, whether you're throwing or jigging or live bit, you know, um, I mean, Stella is just designed to be able, you know, with no limits, to be able to do absolutely anything that you want to do or catch in salt water. So to give an exam, an idea, in the, the Stella generation just before this new generation, we made up to a 30,000 Stella. It's the largest saltwater spinning reel that I know of made, but um, there might be others. But um, as that was out for a few years, people were using it for drop back fishing for blue marlin and catching blue marlin on Stella 30,000s. Wow. Uh, we all know here when the fish were biting, the bluefin were biting the poppers, we were fishing 20, 14,000s, 20,000s, and catching 150-plus pound bluefin tunas, um, you know, all on Stella's. So Stella is is just it with waterproof technology, with the drag technology, with the rigid body, the Hagani technology that we have, the smooth gearing. I mean, Stella is an amazing machine, and um, we've talked about this actually for years and years, that spinning is not as popular on this coast as it is others. It's not a capability issue. A Stella can do virtually anything, most any of our lever drags or star drags or more than they can do. It can generate more drag. It can, I mean, it's more rigid in some respects. Um, it's just a, there's a different style of fishing, and I've always said that on the show. It's not a debate of whether or not Stella can perform to the same level. It's whether or not you want to use spinning or you want to use casting. That's all. But, to you know, Stella can do anything. So I, I, I almost actually this is a, probably the toughest question I could ever answer is to yeah. just sort of sum up Stella. So because what, what's the difference between ba- just basic difference? I know there's tons of differences between a, a, a mid-range Shimano spinning reel and Stella. There's material differences and there's engineering differences. Uh-huh. I mean, they're both. And they come together to power, give a, like a performance package uh-huh. of power, durability, strength, drag range, everything drag range. that is that is just really, really different. Mm-hmm. Now, the best middle of the road, I say it all the time for somebody looking, the best value that we have in a saltwater spinning reel, hands down, is Saragossa. Saragossa. Hands down. And, um, you know, if, if, if you're not quite there to the Stella level, the, the Saragossa is an unbelievable workhorse performing reel for the money that'll it's, do the job it'll absolutely do the job Caught yeah. plenty Catch of big, big tuna. Yeah. oh absolutely yeah no, no question in my mind on saragossa saragossa is actually probably our fastest growing saltwater spinning reel series for that reason interesting um but stella is you know it's it it's the top of the heap it's the premiere and we do everything we can to keep it there and what what did you do different in stella this generation versus last generation, because I thought the last generation was great. The last generation is good. That's why I said, really, I would characterize this Stella as just uh, refinements on virtually every touch point so that the the drag system is even better. We found better ways to sort of vent and cool the drag system so that, especially at very high drag pressures, 
The drag stays not only incredibly smooth but durable over a long period of time. We improved the corrosion resistance and the waterproofing on the inside for sort of less maintenance and less worry in that. We improved the gear sort of cutting and material in the Kagani process that makes the gearing even smoother. And, and I, maybe you could argue more powerful. That's always hard because it's smoother, so maybe it just feels more powerful, but it just feels like a better power transmission. So, And then there's a lot of other small refinements that I could go through on the bale and the, the line roller and, and just a lot of those things. But that's because we get so much feedback at in our top end products. We get so much feedback about the performance and for people using Estella, the little things really matter. They matter a lot. And so when we get that feedback, sometimes we make like this change across the board. A lot of, there's not one giant change. It's all these changes that are a result of the feedback. Next generation down the road from Stella, this Stella, who knows, maybe it'll be a, you know, massive change I, I don't know because we got to get the feedback on this one but um, this one really addresses a lot of the small performance issues and, and again keeping in mind that people using Stella generally are using it at the highest end of everything the most extreme of anything you think about the guys in the northeast if they're casting to bluefin tunas it is 100 percent on Stella and 100 percent of those fish are virtually bigger than what we're catching Right, they're wow, 300. Crazy. That's crazy. Uh, our guys field testing this. They had one that was uh, that was pushing 500. Wow. Unreal. What are they yeah. casting to bluefin tuna in the Northeast? Plugs. Plugs. 100. Oh, percent You imagine doing that, running up on oh, your skiff and man. firing a plug into a spot of. And you think there's a culture pounders? around surface iron here? You should see what some of the bluefin. Uh, I can only imagine plugs these. up there go for if you can even get yeah, one. Yeah, right. There's a plug called a siren up there that. It's almost mystical because, they, <laughs> I mean, it's like yeah. people there ask you, have you ever seen a <laughs> siren? Seen no a kidding. Siren. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Not have you ever fished one. Have you ever, have you ever seen, seen one? one? Wow. That's rad. Yeah. You'd be it's afraid so to rad. fish it. Huh? Almost afraid to fish it. Oh, not not when there's 500 pounders yeah, around, true. man. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah. You yeah. fire that thing, man. Yeah. You fire it for all your worth. Yeah. But it's really interesting because that market has changed, too, that they don't fish as much topwater anymore because of, the proliferation of the diving birds up there, oh, okay. and they dive like crazy on the top. So they've had to go to these sort of subsurface jerk-type baits, swimming-type baits, and um, and they, they also fish some plastic baits up there that are sort of – they mimic eels, and those are really, really effective. But, um, yeah, there's some mystical stuff that goes on up there with plugs. Yeah, but, fired up you know, a siren now. But they're not afraid – they're not afraid to throw that at whatever size fish hooks that when they're using a big Stella. Yeah. They are not afraid. Not reel, afraid at all. The reel's going to hang. As long as 300, you can hang 500, 600, 700, they're not afraid to, to, to fish that at all. That's I mean, there's no awesome. fear when they run up on Watching it. that thing eat it. Ooh, yeah. That's got to be unbelievable. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. All right. Let's jump right back into them and talk to Leroy calling from Carmel Valley this morning. What's up, Leroy? Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Hi, guys. How you doing? Great. What's up, Leroy? Got a question about uh, for Dave in regards to a Shimano Calcutta Conquest. Yes. You came out with a new one with a higher gear ratio. Yeah. Okay. Can they be? Can you interchange one of the old ones to the new gear ratio? Ah, uh, boy. I am not on the technical side enough to answer that, but I would. Probably doubt it, but I don't know. I'd, I'd have to get our service team involved on that, or maybe Ricky knows, but I don't think so. My gut would be the same thing just because it's a different generation of reel. You know, it's not like it's the same reel and a different gear ratio option. If that were the case, maybe, but it's a different generation of reel. So my, my guess would be not, only because every time you guys do a change like that, they're so much smoother and more powerful because it's a physically different set and size of gear. So... I'm the same. I couldn't give you a perfect answer, but I'm, pr I'm pretty sure not the case. Very good. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. When we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Hookup, though, including a lot more of your phone calls. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Hey, everybody. This is Captain Dwayne Diego, four-pack charter captain, here to talk to you about Parker Boats and the good folks at West Coast Marine. When it came time to start Pinnacle Sport Fishing and get my own boat, there was only one choice. I wanted a Parker, and there's a real good reason for it, the fishability and seaworthiness. I've been fishing on Parkers for years now, and I know the abuse they can take. Parker Marine builds a heavy-duty, industrial-strength boat, probably overbuilt, but that's what I need when we're out 12 hours a day, over 300 days a year, running charters. The guys at West Coast Marine built me one heck of a fishing boat. 
from the custom tower with steering and throttle controls to the backup bait pump system. My Parker 2520 XLD will deliver me to the fishing grounds reliably and safe. Take it from me. If you're ready for a new Parker at a fair, upfront, honest deal, you need to see Kevin Kelly at West Coast Marine, located at 1555 Newport Boulevard in Costa Mesa, or check them out and their inventory and information online at westcoastmarine.com. This is Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Long Range Vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the Long Range fishing experience. A spring 8-day, summer 5-day, or a fly-down, fly-back 11-day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality, long-range voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top-of-the-line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at royalstarsportfishing.com or call Tracy at 619-224-4764. This is Greg Stotesbury from AFCO. For more than 58 years, the American Fishing Tackle Company has been recognized as the premier manufacturer of precision built offshore fishing tackle. AFCO continues this tradition today with an innovative technical fishing clothing line designed and built by fishermen for fishermen. From our next generation waterproof shorts like Tactical or Stealth to our new anhydrous waterproof jacket and bibs, the entire AFCO clothing line is purpose built with the latest AFTEC fabrics and features designed to deliver for the demanding angler. To find AFCO products, go to AFCO.com and find a dealer near you. When it comes to Southern California sport fishing, two names stand out. Fisherman's Landing Tackle and Shimano. Hi, this is Doug Kern. We have the most complete selection of Shimano saltwater rods and reels, like Talica, Trinidad, and Tranks reels, plus Terramar and Therese rods. Our professional saltwater experts at Fisherman's Landing Tackle have the know-how to help you choose the right Shimano rod and reel for your next trip. When it comes to Shimano gear, you owe it to yourself to visit us at Fisherman's Landing Tackle at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego or on the web at saltwatertackle.com. One of the dream trips for most anglers is Alaska. There are so many lodges, how do you make a choice? It's easy. Choose the one most Let's Talk Hook Up listeners return to time after time. Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska. No one does it better than Kingfisher Charters. They offer the best service, the most comfortable accommodations, fantastic food, and the finest charter captains in Sitka, all for the ultimate value. One visit and you will understand why nobody beats Kingfisher Charters. Sitka is famous for some of the best runs of salmon in Alaska. And if giant Alaskan halibut is your target, the expert captains at Kingfisher Charters know the hot spots and can put you on a fish of a lifetime. Plenty of rockfish and huge lingcod are there too. And when it comes to fish processing, the best in Alaska is Kingfisher Charters. It's all included in your package. In fact, everything is included except tips. It is truly amazing how the Kingfisher crew continues the quality of service they deliver year after year. Kingfisher Charters 800-727-6136 or check kingfisherchargers.com San Diego's sports leader. The home of ESPN Radio. The mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. All right, big event tomorrow oh, at man. Dana Landing. Looking forward to this. <laughs> yeah. they, uh, you know, Steve told me he's expecting a monster. It's going to be a big one. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be great. Starts with a live broadcast of Let's Talk Hookup, 7 to 9 a.m. Benny Florentino, our Shimano Pro guy, will be on the radio with us tomorrow and uh, probably talking about Tranks 200. What do you think, Dave? I would think so. Yeah. I and think others. So. Yeah, yeah, for that Bay Bass tournament. And, of course, uh, Steve has an incredible sale. Everything is on sale. And uh, Corey Sandin and uh, and Afrin Abutin, Benny Florentino, and Matt Moyle will be doing a, a seminar at 10 a.m. after the broadcast. I'll be the MC of that seminar. So there will be a lot of knowledge in that room for sure. That's That'd over at awesome. Fast Lane Kayaks right next door. And, of course, 25-plus vendors will be there tomorrow. So it's a it's a big show. It's a really big show, and it's a great opportunity. It It, it is kind of centered around the San Diego Anglers Bay Bass Tournament, but it's so much more than just that. You know, I mean, it's if you're an inshore or offshore guy, all of the who's who in saltwater people and tackle will be there. You're going to get to talk directly to the reps to find the latest and greatest. I mean, you're going to get to go to that sale. If, if you're in the market for a new Tranks, but you're trying to decide what's right for you, two, three, four hundred, which gear is, you get to talk to Benny Florentino about that. Then you get to go into Dana Landing and purchase all the stuff. There's Crazy good sales, crazy information, free lunch from Traeger. It's gonna, it's just a, a and, and a forty dollar gift card if you join or renew your CCA membership from Dana Lang. That's just right out of Steve's pocket. Yeah, forty dollar gift card for joining or renewing your CCA membership tomorrow. Wayne and and Chris, the guys will all be down there tomorrow morning. So 
Don't want to miss it. Starts at 7 a.m., goes at, till 1 p.m., and then the seminar at Fastlane Kayaks at 10 a.m. And Fastlane, I know Ron will have a lot of stuff on sale. Hobie Kayaks and all his Kobe Kayak accessories, he'll have a lot of sale stuff. Uh, all the gear in there will be on sale, too. So don't want to miss it tomorrow morning. I can't wait. Dana Landing. Be there. Yeah, it's a it's the seventh annual for a reason because it's better and better and better and this is going to be the best one yet. It's going to be for awesome. Sure. Can't wait. Well, the phones are packed up. Everybody wants to talk to Dave. Let's talk to Mo. He's calling us from Vista this morning. Mo, thanks for hanging in there with us. Good morning, guys. I got a question for Dave. I always drive my reels to get service up in Irvine. Do you guys service any other reels? No. You mean other brands? No. Just Only? Other brands. No, yeah. no, no. We would have to. That'd be really tough. We'd have to stock all their parts and deal with warranty and all that. I don't. I don't have any interest in keeping our competitors' reels going. <laughs> no, um, no. I don't Mo. blame you. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. Just just the Shimano stuff there, Mo. That's all we can do. All right, Mo. Thanks a lot for the call. All right. Let's talk to Ed from Mira Mesa this morning. The other patient caller. Ed, thanks for hanging in with us. Uh, good morning, guys. Uh, my question is for Dave. Uh, I've, I've got. Uh, how do you? actually clean a reel after it's been on a boat and mainly after overzealous deckhand sprays it down with water you know on the side and that i mean is there anything i can do you know probably salt water has gotten inside of it you know i I just don't know what to do other than take it down to get it serviced yeah really two questions there so um here's what i would tell you if it's not hit with a high pressure hose just normal use all i do and all we recommend is spray it lightly with fresh water Take a chamois or something and wipe it down and then have it serviced, you know, regularly, professionally, you know, once a year or whatever, depending on how much you're using it. Uh, It is a different story if they're continually sort of blasted with a high-pressure hose. That's that's a bigger issue that you really almost have no choice at that point, but at some point to have it taken apart and serviced. So, And I know Ricky sees a lot of those, but, yeah, I, I... I wish they you know, wouldn't uh, do Ken, that. But. Ken Corwin um, at Ken's Custom Reels will be on the show next Saturday oh, with nice, Corey yeah. Sandin. Um, recommends having one of those uh, wraps to put over the top. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, well, it's in the rack. Uh, put one of those canvas racks uh, wraps and put that. That'll protect it somewhat, yeah. a little bit better. You know, it's. I know it's hard when you're grabbing one outfit and another and you're sticking it back in the rack and everything, but if you're not using it, you know, a neoprene reel cover, something like that to keep, that high pressure hose from sort of blasting water down into the reel. But if that happens a lot, then you really have to, to sort of have it taken apart and serviced professionally. With that said, though, I'll say the the amount of times that your reel goes down due to saltwater intrusion, I mean, for me, just doesn't. I'm, I'm the poster yeah. child for the worst care of my reels. I fish Trinidad's and Talica and Tranks. Those are the reels that we fish primarily a, bo- a bunch. And and I'll, I'll be the first to say I don't take as good a care of it as I should. It lives on a skiff. It's you're you're ver- supposed to service those? Dude, uh-huh. I, mean, I, I didn't know that. It's a very harsh environment on our boat. You know, and gear <laughs> ends up on the ground a lot, and yep. it doesn't always fit in the rod holders. We're casting. and Put those rods down. I mean, they, it's, it's bad. And, I mean, our reels just don't go down. I mean, it, it just they just don't. That that Especially Talica. That's the one that blows me away the most is I, I can't tell you how poorly those reels have really been taken care of and how – how few things go wrong. I mean, one service after a couple of years is where is where we seem to be at, and I've still yet to put a drag washer into one of those things. They just don't. I'm in the same boat fail. as you. I I mean, I hit mine light with the hose, stick them in my tackle sure. room over and over and over and over again. Yeah. yeah. And I don't I don't have those issues. You know. Yeah. Really well, and that's issues, but... uh, when you were when you came out with Talica. I remember when you when we would go out fishing with Robbie and and, and such. It's like. Don't wash them. Don't yeah. wash them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you were testing that that EI coating. But nonetheless, you know, we do recommend right. that you you take care of it, and that's yeah. the light wash. Wipe it down. If it gets heavily intruded with water, then at some point you're going to have to have a you know more professional service done because it. What happens is it pushes the uh, the grease or the oil out of you know the bearings yeah. and, and off the gears and stuff, and, and you need we, to have that. We done, should so. have our real service annual yeah. if possible. And of course, Shimano still has their service uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, facility up in Irvine. Yeah. Those like guys are awesome up there. They're yep. fantastic. You can take it either to your local tackle store, like a Fisherman's Landing, yep. and they'll send it up to Shimano for you, or you can take it right into Irvine. Yeah. And or uh, some of the tackle off. shops do service too. So either way, too. there's yeah. lots of options here. Yeah. Just make sure you go to a, a Shimano certified yeah. service center. Yep. Yeah. Hey, let's go live. 
to Captain Tim Ekstrom on the Royal Star on the inaugural Mosset Line. Let's talk hookup trip. Good morning, Tim. Hey, Tim. Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, yeah, we're on the board. We're on the board already. Thank goodness. Um, you know, we, we just got started. There, there, there's we had there's some really good reports of, of local fishing here. Local being 30, 40 miles outside of, of, of Mazatlan itself. So we opted to start up above and, and, and work our way down. We're seeing that sign now. We got beautiful weather to work in. Uh, the, the fish that we caught, we had a, we had a 50 pounder so far. We had a couple other smaller ones. We, we got something to work with here. I think it's just a matter of finding the right spot with the big ones. These guys are. A couple three days back, we're on fish that were 80 to 150 pounds. So we're feeling pretty optimistic. We got good weather. You know, as this is the inaugural voyage, we're 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 going to make sure we turn over all the stones on our way to whatever destination we we wind up at. And from the logistics side, just so everybody knows, absolutely flawless. The you know the El Cid Marina speaks for itself, of course. It's absolutely beautiful. And uh, you know, Geronimo there fixed us up. Everybody got onto the boat and, and as planned, and, and I, I just can't speak highly enough about how beautiful Mazatlan is. I spent a couple of days there before the trip, and I know almost everybody spent at least one night. We've got a couple of guys that are already on the next trip that are, that are in town, so they're taking advantage of the other things that Mazatlan has to offer, which are many. We're, uh, we're out here on the pond just getting started, and we will definitely give you guys a jingle next weekend with a full fish report, but oh my gosh, we got one. All yeah, right. Here we go. Okay. Well, Steve, Steve, who's going on the next trip with you, he's flying down on Monday to join the trip on Tuesday. Is very. You should see the smile on his face right now. Are you excited, Steve? I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still. Well, he probably. If he looked at the weather forecast, it's supposed to be grease calm all next Woo! week, we, and it's grease calm right now. Just a little afternoon wind, and then then starting Monday it goes grease calm. So. You know, I mean, everything's great about it. It's, it's beautiful weather. It's a beautiful setting. Let's see, we got four-day trips. These are light loads, which is, you know, we we we, we accounted for that. It's just a uh, really a personal setting here. We're stoked. We're stoked about the opportunity. We're sitting on 300 swings of beautiful sardines. I don't think we lost 10 of them the whole way down. So we are armed and loaded for bear. Whatever we find, we're going to make the most of. All right, Tim. Tim Action live on the Royal Star on the inaugural Mossetlon four-day fly-down flybacks. Hey, good luck, Tim, and we hope to hear lots of good big fish stories. Heck, yeah. Okay, guys, we'll call you next week. All right. Good Thanks, a lot Thanks for the call. Tim. Good morning. Man, that's good news. I'm so yeah. stoked to hear that. That's awesome. <laughs> Things are going well. All the they folks. just started. Yeah. They just got on the boat yesterday afternoon, no, and they're already is, catching tuna. This is a good sign. Yeah. Well, let's jump back into the phones. They're packed up. Bruce in Lemon Grove, you're up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, Bruce. Good morning, Bruce. Thanks for joining us and hanging hey. in there. Hey, thanks a lot. Um, this question is for Dave. Um, first of all, I got uh, some Bantam CU 200s. They've got to be at least 30 years old, and they work great. So Shimano <laughs> products are fantastic. Well, good. Thank you. The the, the drawback I'm having, though, is where uh, my friend's been making us custom bolts to uh, mount like the uh, Torium 20s for our ULAs because they're not long enough because of the butts. Is there any way you guys could make like two packs of those with nuts and bolts both? <laughs> it's uh it's a good question and it's a it's a really tough um, situation. It sounds simple, but there's probably 20 scenarios we could right. do on rod clamp configuration and 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 bolts and everything and it's um it's tough to address because anything we put in the box people in one way or another are paying for and we always have to make that choice of putting something in that someone doesn't need that they end up paying for and etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's I, I hear your question there's there, there's just not an easy answer to it there's different configuration of deckhand rods that some of our bolts aren't long enough or even wide enough for and there's the allure rods that some are not um so I don't have a good answer for you other than we just haven't done it, and there are some aftermarket things available, and that's kind of how we What's sit right now. Yeah, that, That's yeah. the thing. I mean, if if you're in that scenario that it doesn't fit on your, you know, on your 540, there is an aftermarket solution that exists. Or, I mean, we've seen a lot of guys just find that same thread, you know, at a yeah. at a fastener shop, and it's it's one one step that's certainly not an end of the world thing. You just you know buy buy a longer buy a longer screw that still fits into that same. You know, it fits in the same cap nut. Yeah, and, and again, we know it's not ideal. We just we run into, okay, well, if we put it in for that, then we really need to put it in for this. And, and pretty yeah. soon before we know it, we're going to have five clamp yeah. sets in there. And, and drives the price of the reel up. And It is, and it's just a little more sort of complicated and difficult. So, But I, I hear you. I, yeah. I understand. And so the best thing to do is buy it from a local Shimano dealer 
and they'll know they'll have a solution for you. Most of them do. I, I don't. I can't say all of them will, but I think a lot of them know or can yeah. can figure out and help to to get it to match whatever. Um, rod configuration there is there. There you go. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. How about next up, we talk to Dan, who's calling us from Irvine this morning. Good morning, Dan. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning. Good morning. What's up, Dan? Um, I have a question for you, Dave. Okay. Um, I'm looking at uh, stepping up to a Talco 20 this year, uh-huh. moving one step up, moving a step up the ladder, and I'm looking for um, insight on the type of pole I should get to go with it. Um, I'm not necessarily... As Pete knows, I'm not necessarily a high-end guy, but I'm kind of uh, want something that's, um, um, you know, a very solid pole. Um, and speaking of that, so you can visualize who, what I am like. I'm about Pete's size, Pete's weight, Pete's age, but I'm not nearly as fished. So you're a scrawny old guy too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking at Pete right yeah. now, and I'm I, scrawny old guy. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm no, sorry. You know, but. It is what it is, right? Yeah. Um, well, let me ask you just a little bit more first, and that is kind of what do you want to do with this? Where do you want to go? I mean, are you looking at fishing flat falls on a sport boat? Are you looking at fishing on a you know live bait on a private boat? Or well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm. I'm thinking about this pole and this reel. I went out to uh, to Guadalupe once, and we we're catching 150 pound tunas, which is about the right as big as I want to catch. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and um, I love that Talica 20, though. You're gonna love that reel. Well, I I do too. The 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 rod thing. The truth is, is that I mean, the Talica 20 is super versatile as a central point, and so now your your rod question really branches off into probably. You know, something like at a minimum of three choices. So, because if you're live baiting with it and you're talking Guadalupe, you're talking fly lining sardines. So you're going to want something in probably at least like a seven foot type range. This is going to help you for fly lining. Um, and then, you know, also depending on what sort of what weight line you decide to go with. But I, I would think something like a seven foot heavy, maybe a medium heavy, depending on the rod, something Therese. in the in the Therese. Um, if you're going to be fishing flat fall on a sport boat, now you're kind of leaning toward a rail rod type of scenario because that's probably what you're going to end up doing there or fishing a bigger mackerel. So you might be in a longer rail rod configuration like we offer in Therese. So, you know, if you can see what I mean, it really just depends on where you're going and, and sort of what you're going to end up doing. But I, I don't know these days that there's one rod for all situations. Now, if you're only going to take this down to Guadalupe sardine fishing, then – that's a different story. Then I think you could probably deal with something and, and fish in those range much more along the lines of, like I said, a, a seven foot medium heavy, a seven foot heavy, something like that, which is still going to allow you to, to, to fish a sardine and still plenty of power for um, that size fish. So um, it's a big question. I hope that I hope that helped. But again, if you're going to use it for a lot of different techniques, you're really going to end up changing the rod more than more than you think. Yeah. Very good, Dan. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Bob in Huntington Beach is up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, Bob. Good morning, Bob. Thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning. Hey, I got a question for Dave. I have uh, five of the big LDs, the 30s and the 50s, that I've been fishing using to troll. And um, this year I'm thinking of putting all braid on them. Is is, is, it, is that anything? Is, is there, I'm going to have any problem with doing that? So just on it, which, uh, which model reels do you have? Uh, the 30LD two-speed oh, yeah. and the 50LD two-speed. No, there's no problem at all with, with braid on those reels. No no issue at all. Put uh, Would you put uh, Max Quattro on there, Power Pro Max Quattro? Uh, I think depending on what you're going to do, you can, I mean, honestly, the standard Power Pro, Hollow Ace, Max Quattro, kind of depending on what you want there. Hollow if you want to splice, if you like those kind of connections. Uh, Max Quattro if you're concerned about uh, capacity. Where Max Quattro has really been fitting in, a lot these days is um, sport, especially more on the sport boat. Uh, anglers really wanting to maximize capacity on their reels based on the size of the fish. Um, but I, I, that's that's Max it. But Quattro, I love Max Quattro. Yeah. Period. Yeah, but that's, that's what I'm saying is that that's, that's yeah, really been the big issue is that you can pack more of a heavier yeah. weight line on an equal size reel, and a lot of the sport boat guys feel way more comfortable with that. Um, where maybe that's a little bit less of an issue on a private boat where you're mobile. So, um, in connection yeah. strength, so like I, I love, like I fish a Tranks 500 for most of casting scenario now, whether it be surface iron or, you know, poppers and stick baits and things like that for tuna. And the fact that we can fish, you can have 
in on the plus side of 300 yards of 80 yeah. pound line on that reel that was a mega game changer yeah. Yeah. and your connection not is so much stronger from 80 pound to your leader than you know than 65 or 50 is. i just i'm i'm i and max quattro casts so amazing too great. on that it does i'm sold on it yeah. but just to answer his yeah. question you could use any one of the three Anyone lines enough. standard yeah. power pro um which is Incredibly strong, great abrasion resistance, great knot strength. Still going to get a ton of it on that ton reel. of it. If you go to Max Quattro, you get even more line. And because you're stepping up a line, as Ricky says, you get even better knot strength. It's a really smooth line to cast. Or if you choose hollow because you like spliceable connections, um, that makes total sense, too. Yeah, good answer. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. When we come back, we're going to find out what lucky guy's got himself a brand new Tranks 200 HD. More Let's Talk Hookup coming your way on the mighty 1090. It's long range time at the Ridge and Lower Banks. Time to get your gear. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle, the saltwater tackle professionals. Big fish need big tackle, and that's why we recommend the Shimano Talica for tuna, Trinidad for Wahoo, matched with a Therese rod. Choosing the right size Talica, Trinidad, and Therese is the trick, and that's where we come in, with more experience and expertise on long range fishing than anyone. Fisherman's Landing Tackle has the Shimano gear for your long range trip. Fisherman's Landing Tackle at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego or on the web at saltwatertackle.com. Yamaha Outboard's Say Yes to Reliability sales event is here. For a limited time, purchase an eligible new 2.5 to 115 horsepower four-stroke and get five years of warranty protection plus up to $500 in dealer credit. New 150 to 300 horsepower four-strokes get six years of warranty protection. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Visit your local Yamaha dealer today. Offer ends March 31st, 2019, subject to change at any time. Other restrictions and conditions apply. See authorized participating Yamaha outboard dealers for details. This promotion cannot be used with any other Yamaha offer. In 1971, Seaguar invented fluorocarbon fishing line. This game changer brought fish catching advantages to anglers everywhere with less visibility underwater, better knot and tensile strength, and superior abrasion resistance. Today, Seaguar is the number one brand of fluorocarbon because of its proven performance. So no matter the fishing conditions, you can count on the Seaguar family of fluorocarbon leader material. Fluoro Premier, the original blue label and the stealthy pink label to help you catch more fish. Fisherman's Landing is the top choice in local and long-range fishing. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Our hard-working crew is always looking for ways to improve your fishing experience. We offer the finest open party trip from one to three days, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet is second to none. We are proud to say Fisherman's Landing is now a full-service sport fishing operation, offering half-day trips on the Dolphin, and now, for the first time in the long history of Fisherman's Landing, we have three-quarter day open party trips on the Liberty. We built the Liberty specifically to offer a better experience. Run by veteran captain Taro Takeuchi, the 85-foot Liberty is the first open party three-quarter day boat to offer bunks for your comfort. She also has huge bait capacity and RSW fish holds to keep your catch fresh. Plus, Liberty has a big galley and two interior heads with showers. Our open party trips from half day, three quarter day, or one to three day trips can be easily booked online at fishermanslanding.com or give us a call at 619-221-8500. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. All right, the big winner of that brand new Shimano Tranks 200 HG, that's going to Dan in Irvine. Dan, congratulations. You are going to love that new reel. I love it. And uh, Dave, such a great show. That's Thank awesome. you. And uh, I know you're a busy guy, so we only get you once a year, but we appreciate you taking the time to come and uh, join us here on Let's Talk Hook Up. And uh, most of all, we appreciate uh, 26 years of fantastic sponsorship here on Let's Talk Hook Up. Pretty proud to say that. I guess we're the longest one going. Yeah, huh? thank you. No, it's, awesome. it's been great. Um, obviously, we, we think the world of both you guys, and let's talk hookup. So it's awesome. We thanks, appreciate Steve. it. And thanks for having me. Thanks to everybody that supports us so well in uh, in the Southern California market. It's uh, It's great. It really yeah. is, and I hope everybody has another fantastic fishing season. All right, so you've already accomplished so much this year. What's your goal for? Oh, I got lots more for this I've year. Got, what, what, what's your goal here in, on the West Coast? On the West Coast, um, I, yeah, I got to get my tuna club button on uh, nine thread and six thread. So that's for bluefin. For bluefin, that's going to happen. Wow. I hope. And um, I don't know. The other thing is, I, I want to see my friends get uh, get 
get their fish, too. So All right. That'll be good. All right. Well, yeah. you're a pretty good fishing partner there to be hanging out with. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Well, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun, and I look forward to this year and catching lots of fish. Yeah. But if I don't catch a fish this year, I'm still happy with everything I caught last All year. Right. So. <laughs> All right. Very yeah. good. Well, thank you, Dave. And All right. Thank you, guys. And, Steve, good luck on that Raw yeah. Star trip. Thanks, Hope you get them. Yeah, for sure. Hey, thank you for listening today. What a great time here in the studio. And tomorrow morning, a great time live at Dana Landing in Mission Bay. Captain Benny Florentino, Shimano Pro Staff, will be on the air with us along with a lot of guys. We have great giveaways and uh, great live step-up from Mike shows. And, of course, that big seminar and sale tomorrow morning, 7 to 9 a.m. at Dana Landing. Thanks to Adam on the other side of the glass for all you do. Be sure to check out our app at... Adam does a great job on that app, and you can listen worldwide on that app to archives as well as live shows. So thanks for listening today. We'll see you tomorrow morning right down at Dana Landing and right back here on the Mighty 1090.